Hi there. We're going to talk today about making up nucleus colonies. Uh, this is something I do with my own personal beehives. I make up nukes every spring, sell those to new beekeepers and beekeepers that are looking to replace colonies that have been lost over the winter. There's big advantages in dealing with nukes for both the seller and the buyer. Uh, starting with the seller, we're able to take a split out of a hive, which reduces the chance that they'll swarm. We are able to put some new comb into our colonies. Uh, so as we're making them up, we're able to introduce uh, brand new frames there. So we're kind of refreshing the hive that way. And we sell the queen that's in the hive, put a queen cell in when we're done. And that way we get a new queen in our hive every year. It keeps the, the hive stay quite healthy and productive uh, when we're doing things like that. On the buyer's side, you get a box full of bees. It's got the queen already accepted in there. Uh, so that's a big advantage that the queen is already accepted by the bees that she's coming with. We have several frames of brood and then we have honey and an a frame of empty comb for the bees to work on. Uh, so the buyer can just install those in their hive and it's like an instant beehive uh, that's well established. And they can go on to produce honey even in the first year, especially if you have a comb that's already drawn out. But if you don't, when you get a nuke, feed it sugar syrup so they can build the comb. So a little bit more about what goes into these nucleus colonies. You can see that they're made up in a way that there's spacers that hold the frames both at the top and the bottom. So once we put frames in there, they can't swing at all and damage bees or especially the queen. So the frames are held in a rigid way so they're not mobile at all. Uh, this is a design that uh, we developed here in Ontario, a bunch of beekeepers working together and uh, so they have vent holes on either end here, a little entrance flap right there we can close and open and uh, <coughs> they're available through the Wellington County Beekeepers Association. We really like these. When you put a lid on there's no way for the rain to get in here and so you can keep them in these for a considerable period of time. Because they're made up of coroplast, they're resistant to moisture and, so, and they're very durable. We can reuse these many times. So that's the box. Uh, the comb that we're putting in these, uh, we fill them up when we're taking them out the yard to make up nukes. This is a comb that came from a hive that died. We've inspected it to make sure there's no foul brood and then it's ready to use. And as I say, we can use uh, uh, new frames in here as well. So let's get started. Uh, here we have uh, Wendy and Kate. And these are two volunteers that uh, help us out with their work here at the Honey Bee Research Center. They're going to go through these hives, take the supers off, look for the queens. And while they're looking for the queens, they're also identifying frames that will be going into the nucleus colonies. We need to be working with hives that are strong enough to make up a split. So we don't want to use a colony that has less than eight frames of bees covered with bees. So anything smaller than that's too small to split. You won't get a good nuke and you won't, the parent colony won't do, uh, recover very quickly. Uh, if they're nice and strong, the parent colony can recover quite quickly and go on to be a productive hive that season. Uh, we want to be adding lots of bees to these nucleus colonies too. So Wendy and Kate have frames out right now as they're looking for the queen. Uh, Wendy's frame here is just full of cap brood on both sides. That's what we're looking for. Uh, the best looking brood frame in the hive of capped brood. We put two of those inside these nukes and because it's capped brood that'll emerge quickly and uh, increase the, the population rapidly in the colony. And it looks really nice. So the buyer is getting something that looks great. So let's hold that frame up and have a look there, Wendy. And you can see it's just covered from one side to another with the brood. So Kate has a frame here that's pretty good. You can see there's cat brood around here, but an open space over there. So that's not one we would put in the nucleus colony, but it would be a good one to use to shake bees off. When we fill up the nukes during the day, many of the bees are out flying 
and the temperature is quite warm. So there doesn't need to be too many bees home to care for the brood. But at night when it gets cooler, we need to have more bees in there. So for every frame of brood we take, we shake another frame of bees into the nucleus colonies. Sometimes more, more than that even, maybe three, frame, three shakes for two brood frames. It just depends on how many bees are on the frame. Well, Wendy's found the queen here, and this hive looks good for making up a nuke, so we're going to make up a nuke. We've got the queen caged and set off at the side there. It's really helpful if you can pick up a queen and cage her so you know where she is and she's nice and safe. The very last thing you put in the nuke box <laughs> is the queen. So Wendy's got a honey frame here covered with bees. So that's frame number one. It goes in against the outside. She has to fit it down into those little grooves so it, it will stay in place. They're a little tippy with the one frame of honey off the side, but the next frame she's going to put in is one of the two very good capped brood frames that'll go in there with all the bees that are present. So that goes down in there. And then the next frame she's going to pull out will be for adding extra bees. So we need to maintain this extra space in here for shaking the bees in. That's why we're not putting any more frames in just yet. So we're going to shake two frames of brood bees in here. What do you think, Wendy? Two or three? Uh, maybe three. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty warm out here, so there's not a lot of bees on the frames. So we'll shake three frames. She, she's holding it really firmly and then giving it a sharp shake in to get most of the bees off. And that really helps keep the brood warm and the population will grow quickly because there's lots of bees there to take care of any future brood. So that's three shakes. Now the next frame we add is our second good brood frame. Goes right in this position here. And the last frame that we're putting in is drawn empty comb. Uh, that gives the bees something to work on. And then we will be putting the queen into place. Just set her on top there, Wendy, please. I'm just going to lift this up here to close the hive up. But I'll be making sure those frames are all in a good spot. Releasing the queen, letting her go down into the hive there. Then we lift a flap on one end, lift a flap on the other end so we have good ventilation. And then we use this tuck tape. It's designed for taping down building sheathing material, but it's very strong tape, weather resistance, and we go all the, round, all the way around the top. It holds the lid in place and keeps bees from getting out. So that nuke then needs to be put in the shade kept somewhere very cool and hopefully the customers come and pick it up the next day. Um, moving back to the parent hive, we've got to uh, put it back together. So we transfer all the frames over to this side here, get all the brood put back together close together. We put the honey frame in that we brought because we took a honey frame away and then more empty comb and we're going to put a frame of foundation in here just to get some new comb built. We'll put it in that position there. Then we would close the hive up and come back the next day to put the queen cell in. We'll flash forward to the next day and put the queen cell in. We're putting that right in between two frames that have brood and just hanging it like so and then we can continue to close the hive back up. So go ahead, Wendy. From here on in, we just leave this hive alone. We come back after 27 days. It's kind of a specific number. Uh, if we come back after 27 days, if our queen was accepted and mated, we'll have lots of cap brood at that point. If they have raised their own queen, which sometimes happens, there will be just young larvae 
and not a lot of capped brood because of the timing difference. The third situation is nothing worked out and the colonies are laying workers. But in every case, it's very clear what we're seeing in our colonies. And then that colony can continue to grow, produce honey that year. And so we've not only sold a nuke out of the hive, but we'll get a honey production and then we'll prevent it swarming. So it works all the way around. This is a really well-established practice here in Ontario. It's the key to our self-sufficiency in the province.